So now that we've covered fractions and decimals, we're going to look at percentages and percent notation, just moving one step farther from what we've dealt with so far. So, first thing we want to look at, converting to decimal notation. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, 43% of residential energy use is for heating and cooling. So what does that mean? What does that percentage mean? Out of every 100 units of energy that are actually used, 43 of those are used just for heating and cooling. So, percentages always just mean a part per 100, per 100 units. So, let's just write that out. Of every 100 units of energy, 43 units are used for heating and cooling. Okay, so we could say that big long sentence and get the point across, or we can just say 43%. 43% is used for heating and cooling. Simplified, a lot easier to speak and to say. So percentage means per 100, whatever units we're talking about, energy units, in that case. So, notation for percentage. We have a bunch of different forms that are all equivalent. N percent, and you have it in your little box, N percent means N times 0 0.01, okay, because it's per 100, so we have, you know, the tens in the hundredth place, so N per one one hundredth of a unit, or another way could, we could write it equivalently is in fraction notation, one out of every one hundred times whatever units we're working with and the number of the units that we have, or if we want to rewrite that, could even just say multiplying straight across the top, straight across the bottom, I've got n over one hundred units. They all mean the same thing, n percent. So whichever form you're most comfortable with, you can run with. And we'll go from there. So, the U.S. Department of Energy has determined that on average, 8% of residential energy use is for electronics. That seems really small to me, but maybe it's just because I have a roller that games all the time and I've seen it. <laughs> but we want to convert 8% to decimal notation. I also watch a lot of Netflix, so maybe it's my own fault. <laughs> so, 8%. That first do. 8% as a decimal. What does it look like? So I can use whichever form I want. I'm going to use that first one. And what number do I have on the front of my percentage? I have 8 times, again, per 100 units, 0 0.01. So what do I get out? 0 0.08. 8 8% as a decimal or as a percentage. They represent the same thing, but again, different language and we use um, them in different contexts, because I don't want to say, okay, so U.S. Department of Energy has determined that on average, 0 0.08 times the residential energy use is used for electronics. It doesn't feel very natural. We usually talk in terms of percentages. We know how to um, conceptualize those. So, from percent notation to decimal notation, what has to happen? To convert from percent to decimal, Move the decimal point two places, which way? To the left, and drop the percent symbol. So in our last example, 8%, my decimal point was there. If I move one, two units, I need to add another zero, get rid of the uh, percentage, and we're over there. So yeah, move the decimal point two, drop the percent symbol. So convert. 43.67% to a decimal. I move two to the left, make my new decimal point, drop the percentage. 0.4367. So, why do we have to be able to convert between the two? Okay, so one is for application. If I'm actually talking about figuring out a percentage or what percent of some number is this other number, I need it in that decimal form. But when you go to your boss and report your 
your quarterly numbers or whatever you have, you talk in terms of percentage because it's the language that we're used to hearing. So there's a difference between application, I need it as a decimal, and then practical understanding, I want to talk in terms of percentages. Practical understanding. Sweet. So, converting to fraction notation now. So we've gone percentage to decimal. What about percentage to fraction? We also have that ability. And I'll make it fit over here. So convert, first example, 34.8. There we go, that's a little better. 34.8% to fraction notation. So, which of our three options are we going to want to use? Is that one going to give me fraction notation? No, nope. just kidding. What about this one? Yeah, that one will. So will this other one. Those two, I mean, they're all equivalent, but these are basically exactly the same in fraction notation. So how do I want to write it? Drop in the percentage, my n value, 34.8, and I need to multiply it by per 100. So what am I looking at? First of all, if I just multiply across, I have a decimal inside of a fraction. I don't like that. I want to have whole numbers in my fractions. So what do I have to do to get rid of that decimal point? To move it one to the right, so now I'm dealing with the whole number, but if I do that, what also has to happen down here? I also need to move that one, another factor, add another zero. So we're looking at 348 over 1,000. Okay, so we don't want to ever see decimals inside of fractions. Just stick to one notation. We don't want to overwhelm ourselves. All right, so one for you. In 2012, 11% of adults ages 18 to 49 had four or five credit cards. That's a lot of information, a lot of numbers. Which numbers of those do we actually care about? Convert 11% to fraction notation. That's our percentage. It doesn't matter how old they are or how many credit cards they have. We're dealing with 11%. So go ahead and write 11% as a fraction. So, again, what has to happen? Removing the percentage sign, my n value is 11, and I'm multiplying per 100. And in that case, do we have whole numbers, both numerator and denominator? Yeah. And we could convert back. We could go to decimal notation from here, or we can move back to percent notation. So now I want to look at going backwards. I want to convert from decimal notation and from fraction notation into a percentage. What is it looking like? So on the next page of that first example, in 2010, 0.272 of the residents of California were foreign born. Feels funny to talk about you know, a population like that. So we want to write it as a percentage. Convert 0.272 to percent notation. So what has to happen? Before from percentage to decimal, we had to move two points to the left and drop the percentage. So we have to do the opposite to move now to percentage notation. So two to the right, make your decimal point. I'm looking at 27.2. And since we're talking about a percentage now, we can't forget to say this is per 100. Per 100 residents of California in this case. All right. Converting from fraction notation, what has to happen? We have our fraction notation. We first of all have to put it into decimal. So then I can talk about moving the decimal point however many places we need. And then we get into that percent notation. So fraction to decimal to percent. It has to go in that order. We can't get around it. So let's do that. Convert. Mm, what's the first example? 5 eighths to percent notation. So first of all, we want to go to decimal first. So what are we going to have to do? Long division. So, 5 underneath, 8 on the outside. Here's my decimal point. There's my decimal point. I'm going to need some zeros. I'm just going to add 3. 8 into 5 doesn't work. So, how many times does 8 go into 50 without going over? 
6. 6 times 8 is 48. So I look at that difference. We're talking about 2. 8 doesn't go into 2. we got to bring down the next one. How many times can 8 go into 20 without going over? 2. 16, and we're left with 4. Again, 8 doesn't go into 4. Bring down the next one. How many times does 8 go into 40? 5 exactly. So we have a terminating decimal. So as a decimal, this is equivalent. Now to turn it into a percentage. Again, one has to happen. Take our decimal point, move it 2 to the right. So I'm looking at 62.5. And what can't we forget? This is a percentage. So we need to tell per 100. We need that little percent sign. All right. So take that try. Convert 1 8 to percent notation. So 1 8 to a decimal, decimal to percentage. So you had to do long division to get us there. So 1 on the inside. Here's my decimal point. Mark it up in the quotient. And 8 doesn't go into 1, so we need to ask how many times does 8 go into 10 without going over? Once. So we're left with 2. Bringing down a 0, how many times does 8 go into 20 without going over? 2 times. And we're left with 4. And again, 8 into 40, 5 times exactly. So, as a decimal, 0.125, and as a percentage, Again, moving one, two decimal places to the right and adding the percent symbol. So all three of those are equivalent, but again, different context for which ones we want to use where. All right. So let's just deal a little bit larger numbers. Mm, where can I stick it? I'll come over here. Okay. 277 divided by 150, two percent notation. So, 277 on the inside, divided by 150. Here's my decimal point, there's my decimal point. And these numbers are large, so if it takes you a little bit, I completely understand. So, 150, how many times can it go into 277 without going over? So, only one time. And the difference between those, we are looking at 127. Okay. Can 150 go into 127? Nope. So we need to bring down a zero. 150 into 1,270. Really large. If you don't, <laughs> excuse me, if you can't do that, and you had that completely understand, I'll just give you eight times. So eight times 150 gives us 1,200. Difference between there, 70. Again, it doesn't fit. So we got to bring down another zero. How many times does 150 go into 700 without going over? Four. Four times 150 is 600. So we're looking at 100 left over. And again, 150 doesn't go into 100, so we need another zero to come down. 150 into 1,000. Six times. Six times 150 gives us 900 difference between those is 100, so I need to bring down another one. What's happening? We're repeating 150 into 1,000 again. 6, 900. Difference, 100. Bring down another zero. So we get a repeating decimal. That's going to keep going. So again, how do we write that notation? So this is going to be 1.846 repeating on 6, because again, that is the digit that keeps repeating. All right. So that decimal, as a percentage now, what's it going to look like? Again, taking the decimal point, moving 1, 2 to the right, looking at 84.6 repeating, and we have to tell it's a percentage. We need that per 100 symbol. Okay. Last one for you to try. Convert 21 over 50 to percent notation. I'm going to jump inside of this little box right here. I don't have to wipe it all off. 21 divided by 50. So again, here's my decimal point. Got to make it. I'm going to need some more zeros. So first to decimal, then 2%. So how many times does 50 go into 210 without going over? 
four times. And four times 50 gives us 200. We're left with 10. We need to bring down another zero. How many times does 50 go into 100 without going over? Two exactly. So it ended, we had a terminating decimal, unlike our repeating decimal up there. So 0.42 decimal as a percentage, what's it gonna look like? Moving two to the right, 42%. Awesome. So we need to be able to convert between all those different forms because in different contexts, we wanna use a different form of that percentage.